Welcome, one and all, to the hills of Bathurst, where we see cars go up, go down, go left and right, and they don't, they don't do the jumps anymore, but, I mean, these cars couldn't even do a jump if they could shake a stick at it. But it's still present in our hearts. Very Aussie day to you, me, me, me lovelies. Going up to Salisbury, get me some tire pair. Got a go to a cashies. Get myself get myself some uh, Fujitsu conditioning. And also we've got what I consider a pretty good clear sky. And my goodness, that trek, fifty four degrees Celsius, eh? Good, uh, good, uh, good barbecue weather. And a southerly wind of ten kilometers an hour. And I don't know if you don't know what Bathurst is, but. If you didn't know what Bathurst is, it's a uh, it's a place full of uh, full of mystery, full of wonder. It's also the home of the Bathurst uh, the Bathurst races. I'm trying to fill it. Uh, Craig, uh, can you explain? The hills are alive with the sound. Yeah, nah, yeah, nah. Um, no, you've got the Bathurst One Thousand. You've got the Bathurst 12 Hours. You've got another Bathurst race. You've got the World TCR Chat, whatever it's now called, uh, around Bathurst, which has happened. You've got Bathurst the Movie, Bathurst 2 Electric Boogaloo. You've got Bathurst 3 Finding Shane. Um, yeah. Finding <laughs> Shane. It was, was the last two or three a little bit of a... A little bit of a... Oh, sure, sure, my, we've lost, we've lost Gizzy. Where's he gone? Stro, oh my, we have to find Gizzy. Oh, well, he can't be around Bathurst, can he, mate? He can't be having a ripper up Bathurst. I don't know, mate. <laughs> well, uh, apart from not having a ripper up Bathurst, at the very least, what we can have is a ripper around Matt Panorama Bathurst, one of the most iconic tracks, I think, full stop, and definitely the the most iconic track of Australia. And I'm telling you now, we've got a lineup of cars going. To give you a quick rundown, it is uh, six heats. Heat five, heat five, heat three, and heat one will be covered by GSRC, the Global Sim Racing Channel. And Radio on TV, you get the pleasure of two, four, and six. Number five will be the final. Number six will be the, uh, what do they call it? The Not the consolation. Yeah, it is a consolation. It is still final. It is, yeah, basically five and six are the finals. Yeah. So... Um, for those unaware, they are, there is no separation when it comes to the first two splits. Uh, it is done by snake format, so the likes of Lowsome and Kinsey, Oscar Fredrickson, they would have been second and fourth in the timings from quali pre-race qualifying, per se. So that just gives you an idea. You're getting all those, and Logan with a very nice guy. I like that banner with the American flag on it, so get ready to go. 54C! Did I see that right? It's actually gone down now to 39C as we get ready to go racing, which is going to be good. Also, this is a grid start in classic TCR fashion, Rob. It's grids. With... That's one hour on the clock, but 11 laps. So they're going to be around here for about 20 minutes. Very quick racing, as would any fellow of the... Um, <clears throat> of the TCRs in real life, or the BTCC for the British viewers at home, will be very familiar with a format like this. Absolutely bog standard, quick races, you get you, you get multiple in in a day, fantastic fun. Um, obviously, we don't have the Janettas, uh, these are just... Or the minis. <laughs> or the minis, no, no, we just have the one format, but um, we'll be covering three races, GSSC will be covering the other three, and of course, it's always about that green light. As the cars go up, they will... Oh, we got a jump start already! No! That is going to be the number 314. Oh, Cardamone! Def... jump started. Oh, that is a disaster. Here we go, 11 laps. We're green flag racing already. Going around, first corner. Oh, a little bit of argy bargy. That's the blue car there. That's going to be... No! Big... Oh, no! No, Hacker should have gone round. A little bit of a bump at the back. He somehow doesn't have that much damage, but back of the field he goes. Not a great start for him. Pulls off to the side and probably will try and reverse the car around. As they go up the hill, Just you just hear the dulcet tones of the the motor. As they go up the hill, past pedigree. Side by side between Cedric and Jeff Cardamone. 
Uh, now, Cardamone, did he, does he have a black flag? Cardamone does have the black flag, looking at some little bumping around with Hyde and Holt and Thomas, sorry, gets on through. Very chaotic start to the race. The top three have already checked out, so it's Akers and Cardamone. Well, Cardamone will have to get into the pit sometime. Hyde, Holt, boom, is going to be there. Thomas is going to be there. You're looking on board with that number 20 free car for Elias Roman who got a really good start got out there and now as he hits down into Skyline and just look front wheel engine cars Rob so this is really tough down here as they come into the S it down the dipper that's probably the most that's probably the best corner for these cars this dipper because they don't have to put any throttle on nope as as they said as part of the as part of the um the TCR regulations on cars have to be front engined and front wheel drive so that means there's a big block of ouch in front of you because you not only have to deal with a front engine car you also have to deal with the front wheels being driven but now it's probably the most used standard in normal cars but for race cars it means that the wheels that turn also are driven and that is understeer central don't remind me. I might be driving this car in the Nurburgring 24 later this month. Or later next month, sorry. I've lost track of time. The car's gone off a little bit there. You see the grass marks. One of the leaders would not be surprised. McKinsey, Roman, and Fredrickson all bunched up together. Oh, there goes Cardamone. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Oh, no, no, he's got it off track. He's got it off track going into the pit lane. No. The toughest pit lane in, well, the toughest pit lane in motorsport, it feels like. How many how many times have you seen a driver make a, make a mistake trying to go take too much speed into that pit lane? Oh, I've uh, done it myself. You've done it yourself. Well, uh, we'll and now, uh, but that was in, that was in, um, remember the, the, uh, they're retired now, aren't they? The, the current V8 Super Cups? Um, depends what you mean. We're still waiting on the new gen, so we've got the old generation still in the sim. It, no, so, it, no, in, as in uh, they're not they're not being raced anymore in reality. Oh yeah, in the real world they're not being. Yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, that's the problem. Is that I, I keep thinking it's like are they, are they are they being raced anymore? I know they're still being raced in the official series. I just haven't seen. Um, let me see now. Just a little bit of hanging back. We're at Cedric Holmblum, and he is. God, that, yeah. that, 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 yeah. Look, look how close he gets to the walls. And by the way, this is new damage mod. Basically, everything's new damage mod. Oh, nowadays. it is. Yeah. But, you know, apart from Imza Vintage and and other. But look at this. I mean, this is technically a street track for those that always forget. And if you don't know that, why don't you know that? This is a street track that you can actually drive around this in the normal time. So the Jolie and Palmer, you've got to be alert on a street circuit meme, does play into this. But one mistake here, you get a fast repair, but that's probably your first heat done. And you're going to have to try and do it in the uh, get to the main event in the second heat if you can. It's not going to be easy to do that as you are on board with Jacob Hyde trying to get a run. I mean, they do have aero here, Rob, but they do feel like a block of cheese, the TCIs. It's not really aero. It's more so the uh, remember um, remember back in the day when they were really starting to experiment. A side by side goes Jeff J uh, Jeff Schmeier and Gary Thomas. Jeff unfortunately not able to hold on to the position. Oh no! Self mistake. Just locked up the oh oh that is unfortunate for the dog bear Sarge's army. Oh Sarge's place liveried car. That is unfortunate. Oh, that was a self spin due to trying to crunch the gears, I imagine. Oh, too much turning on the braking. Oh. Way too much turning on the braking there. Just loses the rear. Still going. I would have thought that would have been a meatball flag or some suspension damage. Not happened for him. So a little bit of a reprieve, but not what he wants to see. Can Jacob Hyde make the move? He can't. He's minus two on the race. I know it's early doors on lap three of 11. But being two lap, being two positions down from where you were, not what you want to see. Already nine seconds behind the leader, who uh, Logan McKinsey just threw in a two twenty, which is some going out there. Just it, it is a uh, if you're seeing a lot of heat haze. By the way, it is not just for show. That is some severe amount of heat haze, especially for how low the humidity is. Thirty three percent humidity 
as of right now. And the track temperature, remember when we started the track temperature of 39 degrees? Yeah. It's now gone to 54. Wow. So, I'll tell you what's interesting. So, so in two laps, we've gained 14 degrees. The air temp's only 25. Oh, no, no, no. You can't make a move into McPhil and me there, Jacob. That's a bit risky. I know with these cars, you can do a little bit of banging and everything, but it's a little bit risky. So he's going to have to redo it. Just shows how more confident through the corners Jacob is com compared to Holbrook as we go on at the drone camera. By the way, European GT World Challenge. Love that they got that drone working, and this is what you get to see. Can he get a good exit here out of the forest elbow? Yes, he can. I don't think he'll have to slip train to make the move down into the chase, though. I've been seeking suspicion that he's not going to be able to really capitalize because he's going down. They're in similar cars, and I imagine that they're both set up pretty well, slips, pretty slippery. Run, run, Rob. He's got to run. He's oh! On the Lovely. inside. Cuts it in. Perfectly done. Magnificent. Very well done. Jacob has gained two spots in as many laps. And is now back on the charge, trying to get to the back end of Melvin Ukesson. As um, we see Fredrickson still handing the rear end of Ro Elias Roman, who's in a pretty bombshell of a... It's... How many... All of the uh, the top seven are all Elantas. Or Elantras. Um, the, the, the next one down that isn't an Elantra is the boy, the RS3 Ray Partridge with a, with a looking, looking fancy there. Uh, Sarge's place, dog bear, green, blue. Um, oh, we, oh, we got a Honda. We got no, a Honda. we got a Honda. Tom Dryling's got a Honda. There's three, there's four, <laughs> there's four Hondas. Oh, my goodness. In, I love, uh, love saying the Hondas. I prefer the Hondas. By the way, uh, Cedric Holbrum did not have a good hell corner. And he lost another position to Gary Thomas. Gary Thomas getting past now, trying to catch up to Jacob Hyde. And you'll see the, the Honda, the Bay. That's B A E. That is the Honda. I'm I'm not biased. I'm not biased. I say grabbing my Honda car keys. <laughs> but no, on board with the Honda here. Oh, the Audi. Sorry, not a Honda. This is the Audi. Look at the old shit. These cars. Not a lot of people in. Um, the Pacific were running this car just due to the fact that the straight cut gears and remember this is the old style gearbox in a TCR so it, it does have a bit of a disadvantage and credit to our iRacing to try and negate that disadvantage by doing what they can but it's going um, to be what's the disadvantage tough. between straight cut and oh it's not straight cut sorry no it's, it's, it's the gearbox There's something, there was something with the gearbox this is the old style gearbox you mean the sequential thing. yeah yeah we know the difference between straight cut gears and. I was just about to be like, I was about to be like, I don't think you mean straight cut because no, straight cut gives you more horsepower. What's the? Why do you think the M3 GTR was straight cut and why everybody loves the sound of it? it a gave a good sound, but also gave more. Hey, what I'm going to say, if we're talking about TCRs, while we just got the shots at TCRs, we see this battle going on with the 30 of Jess Meyer against Tom Dryling. Isn't this in the um, transfer spot? This is the transfer spot. Well, Mike's going to correct us. Well, I'll tell you what I do like, though, Rob. I see some VW TCRs out in the Nordschleife this weekend. I see some Subaru and, and Mini TCRs out in America. Let's have some variety nowadays, iRacing. Please, I'm begging. Please. I'd love an Alfa Romeo TCR as well. That would be great. It'll probably, go, also... it'll probably go around one corner before it explodes in typical Shit, Italian so fashion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I'm... laughs> no, not having not having that slander. Uh, it's not slander if it's true. Uh, <laughs> Frederick's moving. <laughs> to get past Elias Roman, but I think as well, he's happy. The heart, coming up to the halfway stage, he'd probably be happy with this position. Just holding a uh, station. He's not losing time to um, Melvin behind as well. So that could be a little bit of a blessing. By the way, though, Jacob Hyde, once he got past Holblum, and Holbrook had that moment with Gary Thomas. He gained a half, a second and a half there. So he's doing well in that position. Thomas plus four, really doing well for himself. And again, look at the cars. You try driving a TCR around here, Rob, because it's not the best of cars just because of that, well, lack of weight on the rear. 
No, especially especially when you go through this section, and you go and you pitch down. You're basically everything that was working against you going up the hill uh, is now also working against you and more besides going down the hill because you're basically having to hold the brakes while the front end of the car is basically carrying. Oh, crikey! That is going to be in a strike of the wall for Elias to just to just to circle my point. It is quite front heavy of the car so you're basically all your weights at the front you're trying to brake while all your weights at the front yeah it's not gonna work as on the outside goes oscar Fredrickson. he's gonna be on the inside for the initial corner and roman decides it's best to hold formation behind give up the position and allow Fredrickson to catch up to logan mckinsey who's just been charging away in the uh, yfm yellow flag motorsports car as he's just been able to have basically free traffic ahead of him. He does, he's not had to deal with anything. I mean, yeah, it's the best way he wants to be at the moment. Cedric Holbrook, though, he kind of wants to get these positions back in that lovely car with the Swedish flag on the rear, on the rear, on the roof, sorry, the Fours Esports car. Got a few of those drivers out there today trying to catch up to Gary Thomas, who, if you know which car Gary Thomas is, it's the massive 19 on the roof of his car but he's also got today's sponsor on the front of his car which is the men's health in new zealand it is a charity based on promoting men's health in new zealand and just remember everyone goes through bad times so even the men and just remember boys do cry and it is okay to cry it's okay to let those feelings out as gary thomas holds on to position for the moment question really is when not if because i feel like cedric may get past gary it's gonna take a mistake and if we saw what happened with roman literally what a minute ago anything can happen stuck behind probably will not be able to climb or pass him on the climb up or even at the kink on the crest of the hill but could do a fair bit of passing going down the back straight past jim bean signs in the middle of the back straight Coming through, you want to hold as much speed as you can here. And now here's the tricky bit—the kind of the kind of bit where everybody kind of wakes up because you're just you there. As you can see, how far forward the car pitches. It's actually amazing that they look at the fish yeah, tailing. Yeah, it is pretty bad, it, and just it's just, just it just goes to show how much weight the, the front of the car has um, with the engine. And people tend to forget about this: a front-wheel drive car isn't just directly connected to the front wheels. The gearbox is there for one. And then the transmission transmission case is on the front end as well because with the rear end with the rear rear wheel drive car, your trans your transmission and your um, <clears throat> and your crankcase is situated at the back, so you have less weight at the front to begin with, just out of that regard. And the gearboxes move somewhere near to the middle of the car, whereas with here it's practically all there. I don't know why I think the Subaru is actually a quite a nice TCR car, why you see quite a few Subarus in TCR format in in overrated, not the high spec TCR form formalities, but like down in the lower ones with the turning adjustments and everything, just due to the fact that, I mean, that's, that's the reason why Subarus have boxer engines to fit more space in. So think about all that space you can get in to just get those components in and also just help a little bit when it comes to weight. So really good to have a car like that hello a little bit of off-roading there just hold on one second cedric losing out a bit of time to gary thomas because of it uh, because he will be okay to get into the top spot for the next heat but you know they're racers at heart so if they kind of want to just go racing as we are on at lap seven we've completed six laps as you see at the top of the timing tower there they are, and look at that big gap there. This is 8 down to 11, and then a gap. And then behind them is 12 onwards. Smyre trying to make some moves. Tom Dreiling, Dreiling there. And an Audi get past a Honda up the hill. This isn't GT3. Also, why would there be a Honda GT3? They're Acuras. Why are they Acuras? Because... America! <laughs> I'll tell you why, because America. But the most important thing is I do have confidence in saying that this is the transfer fault. The top nine go forward to 
the top final split. And then we get the consolation uh, split on split six. And this is that transfer spot. It is going to be ninth in this case at the moment. So Tom Dryling will be fighting quite hard as of right now. He has not just one, but he's got two cars. Cardamoni, who at the false start has absolutely screamed his way to the back end of this train and is within shouting distance of correcting the mistake that he had. Now, he, he obviously you could say, oh, well, if he didn't make the mistake, well, that, no, Nick's the point. There's no point in um, uh, crying over. Crying oh, over yeah, crying yeah, over spilled milk. Yeah, crying over spilled milk. To clean it up, make a new bowl of cereal while you're at it. On the inside, he goes on Jeff Schmeier. Schmeier winging out at wide, trying to see if he can hold on. He can't, and he lets go of the brakes. He lets Cardamone try and secure something. Dryling now under a massive threat from uh, one of the more most unique liveries I've seen on a TCR, and I like it a lot. So, uh, yeah, just. <laughs> New car, but same target on the back end for uh, Tom Dryling. Simortal trying to hold on. Meet the new car, same as the old car. Uh, yeah, I, really I, too. You were driving that old busted joint. I'm driving the new hotness. Old busted oh. joint, new hotness. I love the, the, the curves that the Honda has, but we're not looking at Hondas at the moment, we're looking at Hyundai's. And it is Cedric Holblum trying to still get past Gary Thomas or get back past Gary Thomas after losing out. But these two, they've been checked out there because going a second faster a lap is Jacob Hyde up ahead in P5. So they are on their own. They are in their little bubble here. Just two little Hyundais trying to just drive for the sake of driving right now. One mistake by Gary and they might collect both of them. That's how close they are at the Coming in through. Sweeping left. Past the co-tire. Down into cutting. You have to Oh yeah, you're 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 yeah, scraping the walls there a little bit from Cedric. As he's trying to just nail every exit, nail every entry. It's hard enough as it is in a normal car, where you have uh, not everything literally at your front end. Um and in these cars, everything is literally at your front end. So good luck to you. Uh, coming down. A little bit of tail slapping. Trying to break the the draft. In through. Right-hander sweep. Come on. As the looks onto the outside, it's not going to work, unfortunately, for a corner like this. Oh, a little bit of a oopsie daisy from Gary Thomas as he's exiting on the on the inside now. Go, Cedric. He makes the overtake. Very well done. And just in time for the last corner. Secures it for the lap. But this is the big one. Jeff Cardamone made the move. He's now passed and into the transfer spot and now needs to run away. Pure speed. Pure speed coming down the Comrade straight. I almost said that as an Aussie there. That's just how much I'm used to hearing that. Came down the Comrade straight. Made the overtake so easily on Dryling. Dryling didn't really have much response there. Tried his best. But that's a, one of the reasons why the Hondas aren't a very popular pick in this race. It's just due to the fact that these long straights are really causing havoc to them. Dryling doing what he can. But he's so down on top speed. And Cardamone now is just going to start pulling away. Schmeier, though, is right behind Dryling. He doesn't want to lose another. Yep. Garamoni sees the next target ahead, Ray Partridge. Ray will only have to hold on for two more laps. They are on. Oh, no, not two more. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're on lap nine. Two, 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 yeah. two laps plus the current one. Um, And just having to. He'll have to hold on quite substantially. He's already been caught up by Jeff Cardamoni, just to show you. How fast Cardamone is in that TCR of his. Very well done. But Ray Partridge would not want to go down without a fight. And he has the advantage of being on the top of the hill. Tom Dryling obviously not wanting to lose out on the top split. Will try his best. But that just that, that Civic is just not able to. It's a, a, 
as you said, down on top speed. And, uh, yeah, the Elantra, as far as I'm aware, is the popular choice. Just simply because it is just the best all-rounder right now. Let's move up to Cardamone. Audi on Audi. I'm not Let's biased in any way as I, uh, jingle my Audi keys. <laughs> Um, <laughs> wow. Underneath Jim Beam, on the outside, prob probably cresting over the hill. You'll get a call for right side. Still there, hold your lawn. Clear. Very well done. Jeff makes the move, and Partridge saw the writing on the wall. Oh, just not putting down the power as quick as Cardamone. Cardamone's been flying in this car, actually. Um, m you know, nixing the, uh, the, 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 not even lap one, turn one. The start-finish line mistake that he made where he jumped the start and uh, had to recover all the way through. But an ultimate lap. This is how it stands. First is Logan McKinsey. Just Basically checked out of everything else. Uh, Elias Roman in uh, third. Sorry, uh, Oscar Fredrickson in second. Melvin Ukitson in fourth in the 959 car. Jacob S. Hyde, who kind of just has his own sort of uh, play area right now and kind of just doing his thing. Cedric Hoblum, after a few mistakes before, has now gotten well ahead of Gary Thomas in seventh. Jeff Cardamone, 8th, running away from Ray Partridge and Tom Dryling and Jeff Schmeyer, who's caught up. So it's now a four-way melee here. This uh, battle's going on in the back here. Jason Waller of, uh, of... I think that's Udox. Yeah, it is Udox. Um, it's a Udox car, Rob, because it's got the wire, got the wire frame still on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the Udox uh, Jason Waller chasing down J Daniel Halim Salim Howard of Dog Bear Sarge's Place. Coming up through on towards the back end, past the kink. Both Dietrich Halto and Akin Schutt in the background fighting for the 14th position. They'll probably be joining us in split s in, in heat six for the constellations later on today. I'm getting back to it. Tom Dryling, as of right now, his chances are petering away. He's only got one more lap. White flag has been taken. By Logan McKinsey, as will be taken by Oscar Fredrickson and Elias Roman. So, Dryling only has one lap plus two corners. Well, let's wait and see what happens. The rest of the battle, though, is still going on. It looks, look at just the way Dryling is struggling to catch up to Partridge. And he's got Jeff Smyre right behind him. I don't know what happened. To other drivers, yeah, no, I thought there was other drivers here, but it was just Cardamone who just checked out. Got a two-second lead now, just got a nurse a two-second gap. Should be okay, but pressure's on for Ray Partridge as they hit the final lap under the Remco, uh, the Remco bridge. They go under Hell Corner for one more time in this heat. Who gets the better run? I tell you, who got a good run there? I thought Dryling did, but Smyre had a better run here. Could get a good run he is gonna get a good run here look for the overtake as they come up the mountain straight but that slipstream is working and driving starts to pull away a little bit it would have to be a dive here from smire and the dive in to quarry would not be a right move here has to tuck behind and uh, that's not gonna help him he's gonna have to look for an opportunity somewhere in the mountain failing that Tom Dryling will have to make a move on Ray Partridge, probably coming down into the second end of the back straight past Jim Bean, as many of the drivers have done so at this point in the race. Partridge really under threat now, as Dryling and Schmeyer have all closed up behind him. He's not got much of a chance unless he can secure himself into position through Coach Sire as Logan McKinsey for Heat 1 is just one corner away from crossing the line and taking a very commanding first position 
and winner of Heat 1 will be progressing into the finals. Most definitely coming across the line. A very well done. Flashing lights. He's happy about that team. Uh, yellow flag motorsport. Very much getting the silverware there. As will be happy. Oscar Fredrickson and Elias Roman. Probably wanted, uh, you know, probably Roman wanted to be in second rather than where he is. But good enough. Tom Dryling in behind. He is closing very fast on Ray Partridge. On the inside. No! No, that is unfortunate. Ray Partridge has been absolutely decimated off the track. And out of nowhere, Jeff Schmeyer, with a clean nose on him, is in the transfer window, as is Jeff Cardamone. The two of them will go to the top split. And unfortunately, Tom Dryling, after an incident with Ray Partridge, the both of them will be joining Constellation. And that is a huge amount of damage on the front end of Ray Partridge. But that concludes, essentially put, Heat 1. That was a... Yeah, that, that was not a good move there. Tom knows he's not made a good move there. That's just one of those. He wanted to do the late breaking. You could see Ray was... Oh, oh, easy. Let's not have some argy-bargy at the end there by accident. You could see, though, that he wanted to make that move. Partridge was in the middle of the track, wanted to try and do the defense. And, hey, I think <laughs> that's how much uh, Ray spent. <laughs> oh, wow, it sticks to Landy. Oh, yeah, he yeah, flipped yeah. it on his roof, too. That's, that's yeah, great. Yeah, that was yeah. great. Beautiful, beautiful landing there. Beautiful landing. And the judges score for Redica. I'll give, oh. him, I'll give him a give him an eight. Good Ireland, landing. 8.0. Eight eight. Yeah. Great Britain, 8.2. Germany, 8.2. Italy, 8.4. Russia, 8.1. Final score, 8. Point two. Sorry, Rob, your score was the lowest. You know, the, you know the rules. Judges, the, the highest and the lowest gets removed. Sorry, yours is irrelevant. Oh, damn, damn. Just like us in Eurovision. Anyways, hey. hey. <laughs> oh dear me, we put a turkey on the Eurovision. If you, if, if you ever wanted to be, hey, your entry this year is good. Yeah, come on. Yeah, the entry this year is good, but we put a turkey on the. Bleed Neuro. Right, right. Okay, no. Right, let's go through this. We'll, 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 we'll go through this, then afterwards we yeah. can have a big debate about it because, yeah, come on. I am right. not happy here. All right, McKinsey in first position, Fredrickson in second. Romain third. Obviously, as I said before, probably wanted to be in second, but good enough in third, I would say. Ukitson in fourth with a good quiet race with a, a Hyde in fifth. Oh, Hornblum in sixth. The Swedes out in representation today, coming home and getting it into the top split. Thomas in seventh, Cardamone in eighth. I would say he's my driver of the day just for what he was able to do. A, a drive-through penalty after having to never having jumped the start, and has clawed his way back to a very convincing eighth position. Schmeier in ninth, Dryling tenth, Partridge. Unfortunate heartbreak for him. What could have been in 11th. Howard in 12th. Wallace in 13th. Hakan Schutt 14th. Wolf Dietrich Cotto 15th. Redeker with that 8.1 in 16th. And Rob Courtney wasn't able to take the start. And will join us in split six. You've got a problem with a turkey. No, I don't have the problem with the turkey. Just I just have a problem that we thought that that was the winning combination of us having having a animatronic, not even animatronic turkey, no, it's a puppet, it a, was pup a puppet, a, a puppet turkey, right? It was a drunk Irishman holding a puppet. That's yeah. a normal Saturday night for you lot. Yeah, but I mean, that, will that win us points? No, it it didn't win. It didn't win us deadly squat. It actually <laughs> turned into an investigation. You didn't even get out the semi-finals. That's how bad it was. Exactly. That's how bad it was. <laughs> Anyways. And, and, and this year, right, this year, you have your whole public vote, and you take this really weird Barbie core, like, you know, the, some weird, like, horror core type thing, which is really catchy and all that stuff, and the judges go, you know what we really need? We need another boy band. 
because that went really well the last two last year you know a boy band everyone's gonna love them no no one cared about a boy band in eurovision rob nope. what are the irish thinking uh i you see the the judges are the the judges are different to everybody else because they're brain dead they don't whoa, 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 you can't say that i they are because I, I'm, I'm being quite literal here right how can you go from a nice interesting entry for irish eurovision and pick the one thing that everybody hated why why right right you, right you, you think that's bad do you understand what happened to great britain in the whole of the 2010s we uh, gave the contract to simon cowell's record company uh, okay. do you know what we had to vote do you know what we had to vote on uh, hey you were you were in that reality tv x factor voice x voice show you came eighth in the finals what are you doing now you're you're, you're at mcdonald right you can sing come on here's a song Rec sing it you're gonna be in a vote with that guy that came he just missed out on the finals of pop master sorry pop master the quiz show uh pop idol yeah no that yeah Basically, it was washed up reality TV contestant. Nothing wrong with that. Some of them can sing, but they were like, "We need to save money. We've written the song. We wrote the songs for you. You're gonna sing them, and that's gonna kickstart your career." It does not work. So before yeah. you come saying the Irish have got a problem, at least you get to vote on them. We don't. Oh, Eurovision chap. If those if, for the americans hey the americans had their own thing they had the american song contest made by eurovision <laughs> no because this is brilliant no no this is brilliant you, the people who made eurovision made an american version but you're thinking it's going to be all 50 states right rob it's not it's not the district of columbia um i think puerto rico um i think like um the American Samoa Islands also, you know, you had Cisco. Remember Cisco from the 2000s? No. The Fong song? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay, so basically, because of the fact you got 50 states and you got about 54, 56 entries, there right. wasn't even two semi-finals because it's America. They made a whole series out of it. Ah. You had five rounds of competition before the grand final. And they wondered why it didn't do well, Rob. Yeah, that that sounds that sounds pretty on par. Like, meanwhile, as we're in Australia, Australia gets to send a song to Eurovision. <laughs> because why not? Anyways, we will be back in a few moments. We will be awaiting the sessions to go up. For round three and four, we will be covering round four. GSRC will be covering uh, heat three. Don't go away. We'll be back in just a few moments.
And well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is, well, as you can see, back again with TCR's round two for us, feet four in the uh, in the grand scale of things. And of course, same track, same everything. Now, a bit of a mix up for this one. If you look at the weather, still the same, but partially cloudy this time. Same track temperature, same everything, same commentators, same us. But the lineup is a good bit more populated. We have Matt Gelder. We've got the likes of Lynn Kinchelow. Mark Riddicker is back. Ray Partridge is back. Joshua Hampton is back. Kenneth Reader is here. Ernie Ludwig is here. Kyle Marler is here. Daniel Salim Howard is here. Ryan Walker. Jason Wallet. Michael Hogg. Not cool. And um, Hacken Shutt. Is back, but it's not a cult. But it's not a cult. Not oh, a no. cult. No, it's, it's just a lie. It's not a cult. It, it's alive. It's, it's alive. alive. It's alive. Yeah. It's alive. My creation. No, it's not my creation. <laughs> I didn't create that. It's alive. I, where is Michael Hogg? Michael Hogg, please stop driving. You, you just want to see the, you just want to see delivery, don't you? I just want to see what beauty he. Well, my, my shout out to a lot of these cars. TCRs aren't something a lot of drivers drive. So, a nice like the only time you'll see a TCR driven is if it's numbering endurance championship, numbering twenty four, and some people do drive the um, IMPC races, three hour races. Uh, every two weeks so you don't see a lot of participation in the tcr sprint races on i racing it's a shame rob i'm i'm not sure what it is and i'm gonna be everything i hate it puts me off trying to drive the tcrs when there's not many people driving it because then i feel oh no i'll be forced into either a single split or two or top split and i don't have the pace and that's not me going, but then I'm losing eye rating. I couldn't give two hoots. I'd like to have some competitiveness, and if you don't have it, so yeah, I'm everything I, I dislike, and I really struggle with this car. And someone's trying to trying to convince me to drive it for the Nurbo Ring. I don't think I will. Just, don't even talk me into it. Well, talk you talk you into what? Driving this car for drive, the Nurbo Ring. Drive the yeah. car. Okay. Do it. Yeah. Do it. Okay. You see, you see, you see, you just fold like a block of cheese every time. So like you, you know, you, you know, you want cheese. to drive it. Cheese. So why is that? I tried driving it, but I realized that I don't have my my full feedback so strong. So I'm going down the compression, that little dip before foxhole, and I'm right. full speed, and I'm doing a little left hand turn, and the rear just goes. I just, I just spin out. Well, maybe, maybe, don't do that. <laughs> I, I, I tell you what, wow, wow. Well, well, <laughs> you, 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 remember the, um, remember the crew chief in F2? That was like, what do you want me to do? Just drive fast, you know. Just drive, um, just drive fast. Well, no, you know, he, he also said an expletive. But yes. Um, yeah, you, you're going to be like that. You know, next season, Ferrari, Hamilton's going to be there. What do I do, guys? What do I do? And you're just going to be on the other end going, Drive fast! Lewis? Drive fast. Okay, copy Lewis. You need to drive fast. Oh, no, 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 it's Ferrari. Okay, oh, copy. Uh, uh, you are checking? I don't know if you've seen Lollipop Man, um... Lollipop Man comics, who does like the, the just like the little three D three uh, animating spoofs of like not the not the not the Spanish guy who does like the really low budget ones, but like proper. And he had in the last episode in Japan, Lewis just going to to Ferrari, Frederick Vassier going, um, "You got a car for me?" Hmm. And goes one of his crew chiefs, "Have we got the third car ready?" Okay, we are checking. Disappears, and Lewis is like, "Well, he's checking," and Frederick just goes, "No, no, no. That means he's on his coffee break." And I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. Every time you hear we are chip, 
Yeah, every time you hear we are checking, they're gone. They're gone. They don't care. Uh, I, I, having having have, having working having been working with Italians for like the last five years, yeah, they they are either on a coffee break or doing something with the coffee, like just constantly. And I thought it was a joke, and I thought it would be insensitive for me, like, like just. Like oh no 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 don't I don't I don't expect Italians to be actually drinking coffee all the time no no really okay I mean I mean I can't say much you know what the British are like yeah bloody tea drinkers I'm not a tea drinker I'm not a coffee drinker I'm not a hot drinker at all but I do know that we have a race here and there's going to be some upset people only three of these cars are going to make it to the top split Ooh. and we have 15 cars a stacked deck as one will put it i have no idea why that's there uh, it is uh it is going to be a race around here i hope it's a race 55 degrees celsius 131 degrees Fahrenheit around Mount Panorama. Starting line is there on your screens. So you can see Kyle Marler, lead car for this one. Oh no, where's he gone? He's blinked. He has. Oh no, blinked. he's not. He's gone. Oh, he's gone. No, he's back. He's back. He's back. <sighs> this is done in grid position of where they finished in the first races if you notice a certain tom dryling missed out and because he was the first man not to transfer to the top because he was in the second split he will take row two so everyone on the even side or the left side green flag though where is he where is he where is tom dryling we only have where is he he's not in he's not on the starting line and lynn kinchlow has already gone bananas and decided to pass Ray Partridge on the inside. And Tom Dryling starts from the pit lane. He missed the start. Eyes on Ryan Walker as well. He had a mare of a start in the of the race last time. And he's, he's behind four cars, all fighting wallet. Read it, shut. And I believe that is Howard as well. Reed has had a shocking start. And now Ryan Walker is having to go up to the front. Already oh, hacking shuts in the wall. And Ryan Walker's going to try and get some more position. There he is. Is he going to get try and get two? You cannot get one in the quarry. What a move. Bang it and bang it. He goes into the wall. That was never going to work, but he holds on to it. Pandemonium on the hill. As a attempt at trying to rescue the situation goes awry for Ryan Walker. And he has 11 long laps ahead of him to try and salvage something with a damaged car. But he'll try his absolute best. Matt Gelder, another one of those that had a very bad start. He's down in 11th. Not where he started whatsoever. Daniel Salim Howard chasing then Ray Partridge, who's already lost third position. The final transfer spot to Joshua Hampton, who is trying his best in the car. 89 to get a maximum gap between him and Ray Partridge. Lynn Kinchelo trying to catch up to Kyle Marler, who had a... Terrific start off the start line. And was, is just able to race his own race. A Honda leaving a race. What? A, yeah, a Honda, a Honda leading a race. I never thought I'd say it. Yeah, yeah, because it's only in TCR that you see Hondas. And just look at this battle as well. That's Kenneth Reader who had the bad start. Ryan Walker. I want to say the hack and shoot. Hit the wall coming out of Forrest's elbow. So he's going to lose that position. Is Ryan going to make the move on Kenneth here? It's an Audi trying to overtake a Hyundai. Not going to happen. Up ahead of them is Jason Wallet. They are P. Right? Walker's PA. Actually, no. Wallet's gone wide. So is Walker. They're dragging these cars to the rickety, raggedy edge. And I think Walker's going to try and set himself up for a move here. No. He's going to see two cars having a little bit of an argy bargy sliding into each other, saving into each other. That's heads up there from Ryan Walker. Ryan Walker back up into sixth, cutting it clean and serene as one can do. He has three more positions to gain before he is in transfer spot. And he will have to chase down Danny Salim Howard, Ray Partridge, and Lynn Kinchelow, who's had a mistake on the hill and has lost a place to Joshua Hampton, who is now in second place. Colin Marler running away 
and Lynn Kinchelow under threat from Ray Partridge, who's looking on the outside, coming up in towards second corner pedigree. No dice done, though. But if these three continue fighting, all that deficit Ryan Walker has to try and make up is going to be gone. Remember, he's got to try and find two seconds. I think Ernie Ludwig getting past Jason Wallet in the backfield. He's got to try and find two seconds. Early days, it's lap two of 11. I think he's got it. Now that he's clear of everybody, he doesn't have to drive too hard. He can just relax in a little bit. A little bit of hard driving last time by cost him a little bit. So now, Walker, there he is in the background. The satellite racing TCR going to just wait as Kinchlow has to fend off Partridge and Howard for the last transfer spot. But the more they hold up, here's Ryan. Ryan pushing hard, closing the gap between himself and Daniel Salim Howard through the hill. Using his better confidence in the brakes. A little bit of a scrape with the wall for, I think that was Hack and Shut. Very big scrape for the Hack and Shut. He's stuck. That is a front left issue. Let's have a look. Oh, he was really having issues there and couldn't kick. And he actually couldn't turn the car and is unfortunately out of the race. I reckon he hit the wall somewhere else up the road that caused all that major damage. Back to these cars driving along and Partridge looking for a move. Partridge knows what happened to him last time, so he's just going to get a car right now. Oh, no! Partridge got in too hard! And is he going to collect another car? No! Oh, that is heartache for Partridge again. Going to have to try and slow this down. Look at Ryan Walker right on the back of Howard. Just like that, Partridge comes back out, losing position. But Walker going to get one more, and that will put him up to P4. Wow! That from Partridge, he went from almost a crystal copy of what he happened to him in the last race and then doing the exact opposite and just putting... Remember what I was saying, Rob? Too much steering? Too yeah. much steering. If you overload the column in a front engine car, a front wheel drive car like this, you're absolutely going down and out for the count. There's not much more you can do as R Ryan Walker is trying his best to charge forward. He's doing very well. In through. Doing. He is. He is doing. Yes, indeed. He is doing. But. Doing it. <laughs> yes, yes, he is doing. Oh, my word. Have you seen the two by two in the background, though? Because Partridge, Ludwig, Wallet, Hog, all having a little bit of a go. They just get it all done together. Not a cold. That's not a black car today, Michael Hog. That's a very colorful car as he tries his best. I am not used to see Michael Hog with the not a cult racing car. It's something what that is, isn't black. What is or white. that? It that is, is <laughs> red and yellow. That is very colorful, not a cult. Yeah, that's Hulk Hogan, brother. He's saying it's fine. I'm just taking his prayer. <laughs> and I'm gonna prove, brother, that all my cultomaniacs are gonna are gonna come to the cars and the love and all my they're gonna do it too. What you gonna do when Kitsuna Mania runs wild? Uh, yeah, runs wild, brother. And now for you just you just add and, 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 and now back to standard programming with yours truly here at the oh uh, yes actually we're gonna get back Ryan Walker's right in the back of Link Kinchlow this one move's gonna be done before the kink at Conrad this is done this is a done deal if I tell if I say so in fact I wouldn't be surprised if Lynn just gives up uh, just gives up just for the space reason I'm not saying he gives up but just because of how this kink is no he's gonna Ooh. go for this he's gonna fight this that's a really good move around the outside of the kink. That's great from Lynn Kinchlow. Can he hold, slow this down? He can. And there's no way for Ryan Walker to go. Oh, whoa. Howard with the overspeed, with the run. But it has to do it around the outside of Murray's corner. This is going to be dicey. Can he get it done? No. Walker's going to just squeeze him there. They're going to go side by side. Great racing here. Still side by side. This is for fourth. Do not want to be held up anymore. Rita, fastest lap of the race. Can Howard do anything around the outside? No, he can't. And Walker's going to have to do it all again. But Kinchlow, that is some hard fought fighting. Kinchlow is not going to give up. Not now, not ever. He's a good fighter in a car, in cars that you would least expect people to be good at. He's got a knack, you know, just a, a tool to the trade, jack of all. And he is still under th massive amounts of threat from the likes 
of Ryan Walker and of everybody else around him. Ryan Walker pushing up onto the edge of pedigree. Looking on the inside. Can he make a move coming up the hill? No, he doesn't. He sits behind. Coming in through tire power. On up towards the hill. Does he try anything? No, he's no. going to call it. You can't make anything going up, Griffins. Here they come to Solman. Can't do anything here. We did see in the, in the first heat, drivers went to try and make a move at McBillamy. But here they go into McBillamy. Not going to try anything. If he had a good run here, he could have made a move into Skyline. That would have been a move of the day, if anything. But we see some really good racing here. Just biding their time. Key thing, though, for Walker is behind him is Kenneth Reader, not Daniel Howard. And a little bit of a slide there for Kinchelow, but he keeps it together because Walker's not over pushing this car right now. Keeping the tire temp safe, keeping everything fine. He's putting Kinchelow under threat by just doing nothing. And look how smooth that exit was out of the forest elbow. This is going to be round two. Walker's going to have the same run again. What will Kinchelow do this time? Because I really liked what I saw last time. In on the outside sits Kinchelow he'll come inside onto the next corner holds it steady that's a little bit of a slide Kinchelow at the edge of his seat trying to keep everything all rolled up together Ryan Walker trying to do the outer inner and then outer again he's trying as hard as he can that is going to be Danny Salim Howard trying to carve him up no that was Kenneth Reader trying to carve him up on the outside just unable to do it coming on to the inside now goes Kinlan Kinchelow Ryan Walker is not able to capitalize still stuck on the outside coming past the start finish line but he does edge ahead he does make the move absolutely fantastic great racing by both drivers and that difference there was Kinchlow loading up the suspension on the curb on the inside of Murray's and that could be all she wrote as Walker's gonna try and pull away now as fast as he can gonna be hard eight for Kinchlow finishing in fourth but remember we're not even halfway through the race so there's still a shot here that Honda has some speed over the Audi, but it's going to be tough. And we know how smooth Walker had been up the hill, except for the first lap. We've got to point that out. However, this now is just a case of driving away as quickly as he can. And I believe at the front, the leader may have had a moment because I don't remember Hampton being so close to him. Mistake up on the hill at some point or another. Has put Joshua Hampton right behind Kyle Marler. As Kyle is trying to correct his mistake. He is about six tenths of a second down on his previous best. So he, it is this lap that he made the mistake. And he is actually being wowed up very substantially. By the car number 89 of Joshua Hampton. Coming through. In, through the S's out onto the back straight. Needs to make sure that he does not get caught up by the time of Jim Bean. There's Jim Bean. Comes through. Still a bit of a gap waning at 7 tenths of a second. But Slipstream can have an effect here. Especially on these cars. Especially when you don't have much else I mean, to go on. But come through. He won't be able to catch him. But he'll still be a existential threat to Kyle Marler as of right now. Daniel Salim Han Howard unfortunately... And Lynn Kinchelow are out of sync right now. They used to be in in up and around the third position. They're both fifth and sixth as re, as of right now, respectively, and are trying to salvage something. I'm not sure they will. Five laps completed as to cross the line now. This is lap six of eleven, with three to go forward to the top tier. Those would be Kyle Marler, Joshua Hampton, and Ryan G. Walker if the standings were to not be updated from now till the end of the race. And I think Joshua Hampton is really closing in. Yeah, he's really closing. He was really closing. I was wondering why Kinchlow is down in fifth. He had a small moment at the cutting um, and Rita had the run and he just decided, Kenneth, just go. It held a few people up, but that's the best way to go. Here comes Hampton. Doesn't need to over push. No points are given for these heat races. All the points are in the final two races of the day. So there's no need to be as aggressive. However, this does set you up 
for your grid position at the F for the next race. And when you think about it, Rob, yeah, he wins. That's going to put you on the right side of the track. If Hamden realizes this, he might be uh, beneficial to stay second. Give himself, yes, he'd be on the on the final row, but he would also be on the inside going into turn one on the main event. Just some food for thought there. Just some food for thought. Where would you want to be? Uh, I'd be on the inside. Exactly. Just some food for thought. I'm pretty sure. Because we do the maths. Top 15 from Heat 3 go into Heat 5. That's from GSRC. And the top three from this one go to Heat 5, which is on GSRC. And we're on it. So, yeah. That would mean that if you win this race, you would be technically 16th on the grid and you'd be on the wrong side of the track. But like I said, I know where I want to be if I'm Joshua Hampton right now. Maybe someone's told him that. But everyone else then, if they know they can't get to the race and Partridge losing out again, in fact, uh, yeah. losing two positions. Yeah, lost two positions on a straight. No. He hit a wall there? I, he might have on his rear left it looks a bit more damaged um, oh no, no 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 when he went when he went to let um when he went to let chase from wallet by he got on the grass for some reason he just lost all his speed no idea what happened there for ray partridge yeah unfortunately it all goes from bad to worse for him as he is now stuck down in ninth hack and shut by the way towed the car and has retired the car oh. so he is out of the race not cool that was hacking, that was Michael Hogg, but yeah, not a cult. Yeah, not a cult. Um, back up into speed. Joshua Hampton still chasing down. While Ryan Walker, after having such a pandemonious start, has settled into the groove, is now in third position in the final transfer spot ahead of Kenneth Reader, who is not able to match up for speed as of right now. So, unfortunately, will porten porten potentially... Be missing it. Portent potentially, yes. I don't even know why it's insinuated. Potentially, it's like, I don't know. I mean, ten to ten of fancy. I, I was just thinking because remember that uh. great start Ryan had at the start of the, the start of the race on the grid. Now, remember last year in the TCRs at um, Knock Hill. Yeah. I seem to recall Ryan did something similar. Oh yeah, he had a he had a pretty. He had a blistering start, but he had two bad heats and had to use to find the the penultimate heat to get into the main event. I seem to. Yeah, I think that I think that's what he did. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but he had some. He had a blistering start in that set in that penultimate heat. Get through it. it, it kind of similar to what he's done here today. Also showing that you can actually make overtakes around. Oh yeah, you did. No, no doubt about that. I mean, overtaking here is. You just need to be brave enough. I think. Yeah. I, don't look at me. Yeah, I would not. I, I, I would I, not. I did a double around here for the 12 hours in a GT3, and I was due to get in the car again. And I was kind of glad I didn't get in the car again due to um, external reasons. I was kind of like, yeah, no, I'm fine. Take yeah. the car. Take the car. Take the car, uh, take, take the car away from my hands. <laughs> uh, by the way, just <laughs> as, as a point, this is the battle for fifth between Lynn Kinchelow and Daniel Salim Howard. He's, oh, crikey, that is a mistake from Lynn Kinchelow. And just to insinuate how it's all gone wrong for him, that was a wide coming out of the final core and had to give up the position to Daniel Salim Howard. It's all gone Pete Tong there for Lynn Kinchelow. Got a chance to, to fight it back. But that is actually, again, important situation here because not sure how they will um, rank out the, uh, the field. These guys are fighting for that other position. Oh, Lin, that's very brave. Lin, that's very brave. Lin on the grass, that's very brave. He's still going to go for this move. Side by side, they know they're going to touch. They're the lightest of touches. And Lin, there was a gap there that was closing ever so tight. I would not want to try that myself. And for a moment, I thought Lin was going to try and make the move Kevin Estra style on the grass. <laughs> the uh, the uh, the uh, K-Mag... Uh... 
the cane mag. Oh, the grass is a part of the track, isn't it? Is it anything should anything is part of the track. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Anything is part of the track. <laughs> you go for a gap that no longer exists. You're no longer a racing driver. Oh, please, Ayrton. Yes, I said Ayrton. 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 Yes. Still, this battle's going on. I love this camera. Into the drone. Down the hill they go. Kind of something you would see in like a drift movie. You know. Du, 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 Tokyo Drift. Oh, yeah. Tokyo Drift. <laughs> why, did you, why did you do Mission Impossible for Tokyo Drift? Why not? The, the, look, 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 if anybody comes up, comes up to the video and says, what copyright strikes are you getting? They won't know which one to give us because we will have just said, oh, we... we, we... <laughs> what copyright strike do we have to give this video? Yes. yes. <laughs> they won't. They won't even bother. Yeah, Sound of Music. Um, that one... Um, th th there's been some others, yeah. <coughs> Everybody looking. Lynn, that's not the line. We're not doing rallycross today. Just getting a bit too hot into the chase. It's done so easily at the chase, Rob. Anyone? Oh yeah, that. it's um, I mean, it's a it's case of uh, you, you you cook it and then you send it and then when you when you go ahead and send it, it's like oh wait, hang on, and then it's not cooked yet. Do you Jeez. smell what the TCR is cooking? Yeah. <laughs> What the TCR? It, well, yeah, it's called r r burnt front end rubber because that's all these cars do is burn the front end. Yeah, yeah. You, you never change the rear tires on these cars, folks. That's the that's the secret. You never change the rear tires. Just, well, yeah, because go. they're all all they're all they're doing is just keeping the being there, just yeah. existing. They yeah. just exist. They just make sure that the rear end just it, it this doesn't <laughs> become a motorcycle where the wheels are on the wrong way. Yeah, they just want to make sure you're not dragging your backside. My wheel. I tell you what, who's dragging a lot of cars? Only Lovewig's got Ray Partridge, Matt Gelder, Wolf Dietrich Hotto. Look what I've done there. Nice little segue. This is important for track position for the second for race. For the consolation, yeah. But also, we've got Udox versus Dog Bear. Yep. Team racing here. And I think the Dog Bear car's on his own here, just being a little bit sandwiched, almost getting pushed. He's being told, get a move on. I'm going for ninth, says Matt Gelder. Yeah, Matt Gelder pushing his way through. TCRs are known for the RG barginess. And when I say RG bargy, they'll literally use their car as a weapon sometimes. So if you've ever watched the BTCC, it tends to be like that sometimes where, you know, it's a, it's a suggestion. Uh, of say oh, that is a wide car. That is, oh my goodness. A very difficult situation for Matt Gelder. I think that was Matt. No, oh, Ludwig. it was Ludwig. Ludwig. Ernie Ludwig. Having a, a bit of a heart. Imagine because he, the the wheel sure as sure as hell said, "Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh!" Yeah, you don't want to be on that grass. Usually, the rule is take your foot off the throttle. Uh, kind of hard when you got these cars where you take your foot off the throttle and you still got all that speed because remember. You know, engine at the front. The momentum will still hold you there. Very tight and tough to make that move. So Ludwig loses out on the pack. Wolfgang Hotto looks like he's going to try and make a move down here. And this is still important. Permutations almost cutting him off. Ludwig holds onto the inside. Oh, no! Oh, he no! No! no. I think that was a bit of both cars going into... Uh, into each other yeah they were both just veering into each other ever so slightly just yeah. a racing incident yeah unfortunately we also had nowhere else to go it's a uh yeah that have you they sometimes hard times. hard times hard times indeed it, it it is quite difficult once they decide on their own to uh not want to be cars anymore. What do they decide to do if they don't want to be cars? They want to be, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, oh, oh, statues? Sorry, ha uh, ha Howard, no, um, paperweights. Howard just decided to be nothing and just blink out. Yeah, there and, and then, and then uh, all of the like flotsam and jets. Uh, also, by the way, Ryan Walker, <laughs> he's just at the fastest lap. And um, he's only four seconds behind Joshua Hampton here. Yeah, theoretically Which, he could. Theoretically he could. Um, he's on the penultimate lap. That's the only problem. 
Yeah, but theoretically, still he could still uh, if he if he wanted to make a move for it. If it all all he needs to bank on is for um, Hampton to make a mistake. But we're still paying attention to this as of right now. This is still Lynch Kitchlow. This is still him trying to uh, muster up. Oh, thing. oh no! No, that is a massive bash to the side. Unfortunately, the downhill is picturesque in its oh oh oh, oh crap! Oh no! Look at that rear left. That, that rear, rear left. left. Yeah, that is that has unfortunately. Matt Gelder with a meatball flag. Matt Gelder, what happened? Oh, he's towed. He has towed, and that is broken suspension, most definitely. Look at the replay. This is Matt oh, Gelder. Oh, he did the same thing. Goes in way too much speed. Oh, oh, yeah, that is a broken front right suspension. Now, in classic like V8 supercar Australian language here, ah, oh, the 44's gone in the wall there. Ah, oh, he's just got a bit too hot down Skyline. Uh, yeah, that was some Aussie thing. Final lap for these cars. Kinchelow's going to have to nurse a two second. Uh, gap to Jason Wallet should be doable. Matt Gelder, unfortunately, is done for the heat hack and should have been done for a while. Ryan Walker, if he somehow finds a way to uh, get four seconds this lap, uh, just 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 say just he's got a chance. He's honestly, good. honestly, it would be amazing to see how he starts in that top split in heat five. I'm just really curious. I, I would say that he's probably going to be on a man on a mission kind of, kind of mode because you know with how with how difficult it's been, like uh, the the bad start that he had, and then having to fight his way through. I, I'd say he'd be in a man on a mission kind of mode. I mean, what well, what he gained like seven positions on the start, hit the wall, lost two of them, and then got them back with just so much. Fear. I saw that slip up. Oops. And uh, continuing <laughs> on, Carl Marler will be just cruising away down the hill right now. You're seeing Joshua Hampton. What is this livery? What is well, this? The... Yeah. It looks fantastic. Look at it. Look at look at the bottom of the car. It's a little grass. It's a little, little grass. Wait. It's fantastic. Wait. No. No. No, Rob. No. What? It's great. I, uh, I used to deliver it to a car. I used to deliver it to a house that had a smart car in AstroTurf. Oh. From that company. Oh. Oh. From that company. <laughs> Astro Whole smart car covered in AstroTurf looked amazing. Okay. Amazing. That smart car most definitely did not. But I tell you what is amazing. Carl Marler. Coming home, taking the victory in Heat 4, secures his place in top split, and he's having a happy time. He knows he's done a hint. Yep. Celebrate. Take a bow. He can't drift it because it's a front-wheel drive car, um, but I'd like to see a try. Joshua Hampton comes home in second, and the final transfer position goes to Ryan Walker in third. Kenneth Reader, fourth. Daniel Salim Howard in fifth. Lynn Kinchelow, sixth position. Jason Wallet in 7th, Ray Partridge in 8th, and that is Tom Dryling in ninth. 10th is Wolf Dietrich Hotto, Mark Redeker in 11th, 12th is Ernie Ludwig Michael Hogg, who's not a cult, in 13th, Matt Gelder, 14th, what could have been for him, just, uh, just not the greatest day in the office, and of course, Hacken should, really bad day in the office, in... In uh, 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 15th, sorry, my brain was just like, I already said, did I say 14th? Did I, did I say 14th, right? Anyways, that is Hacker Shut on your screens, and we went over the results just now, and we are going to take another break while we wait for the next race to begin. Heat 6 will be coming onto your screens very, very shortly. Don't go away. We'll be back with more as time goes on. Consolation race for us here on Radeon TV. The GSRC boys will be doing the finals.
top split finals. Don't go away.
charge of that guy. And uh, you have the car in custody too? The car that we were following is not in custody. The car is gone. Thank you.
and welcome back Warren last time today in a very foggy version of Bathurst uh, a very different track temperature to what we're used to and much stronger winds 32 kilometers an hour to the south this time around for some reason but we'll gloss over that as we get ready to watch the heat six the constellation heat for all the drivers at the moment I'm assuming, Craig, they're going to have to be quite aware of the track temperature changes. Don't care. Can't have a barbecue. Too cold. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, in all due fairness, it's 19 Celsius out there. It's still warm enough to have a barbecue. We're Brit I'm British. This is warm enough for, for British. For, for British. For British. I've, uh, I've, for I've, also, I've also seen my dad have a barbecue in this weather, so, you know. There is that. It's it's not. Look, look. You don't barbecue because of the good sights. You barbecue because of the good heat and weather. If you can go outside, if it's good weather to go outside, that's where you have a barbecue. Okay. Right. No matter if you can't see. If it's if it's twenty five Celsius out and you've got clouds so low you can't see a hundred meters, you still have a barbecue. All right. You still pop on the barbie. Oh, you're at it. You have a VB long neck. At 29 in the morning. Get that up, you. Yeah, well, final race. This is where it's for all the marbles. They will have points in this race. I don't know the grid standings for this, uh, but uh going to guess that's going to be due to uh, other things. By the way, Ryan Walker in that last race. I, I passed the information to GSR see what happened. I gave a nice explanation of what happened to Ryan. All right. Uh, he just responds, probably the hardest I've had to work for a top three. Yeah. That, Ten, it's, it, yeah, yeah I'd, I'd say that is definitely a, that is definitely a, a way of wording and summing it up. It's, it's a very difficult hot seat today for him, but I, I'd say he's, uh, he's glad to see the... Uh, Happy to see that that drivers are out there um, giving it it all. And we hope to see them come the time of the end of the race. One minute until we can say it is the final race of today for the majors. With a very foggy and a very mildewy day here for us in Heat 6. I am not sure it'll be the same across the board, but... It'll be worth seeing how things are. 3 p.m. at the 12th of November, oh, 2024. Yeah, hold on. Foggy at 3 p.m. That's what it says. What? What? When the dates? Oh, October. Okay. No, that that does make sense. It, well, according to, according to the weather, according to my weather report, it says it's Tuesday, the 12th of November. Yeah, hang on one second. But it's not it, it, in Australia land. Everything's upside down, which means. This is their this is their summer, yeah. Yeah, this is like their late spring, early summer. You wouldn't get fog if, if if this was like now. I can understand the fog, but tempest weather system. In all due fairness, though, it does give you different weather. I know people were saying, "Oh, ever since the rain update, I've had fog everywhere." No, ever since the tempest update, you've had fog. That is weather. Yeah, because yeah, because, yeah, because it's actually, it's actually like gone ahead and been like, yeah, any of the stuff that we've done wrong is now done right now. Travis Henderson, Mike Go Lightly, Gary Thomas, Kenneth Reader. If you're wondering where the first guy is, there's Daniel Howard and Lynn Kinchlow, Jason Wallet, Ray Partridge. You have a very wide selection, and you have a Hyundai the front. Boo, and you've got three. Honda's in the middle. Yay! And no one cares about the Audi on the front row. Sorry. I do. Yeah. Yeah, but it's you. Yeah, but it's an Audi. It's one of the greatest car brands ever in history. Michael Lightly, hats off to you. You you, you show you show everybody else who's boss, right? You're going to win. You're going to win. So go Lightly into the first corner, for the love of God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as the green light goes up. Michael Hogg, Matt Gelder, I can show the lead in the rear, and off they go! Oh my goodness, that is a very slow Elantra 
Off the side of the line. Oh, dear me. That is... It's Reader. It's Reader again. Reader. Oh, having, having the difficulty with the... With the start, hey. Losing more positions. He's already minus four as Jason Willett goes by. Good start for Link Kinchlow, though. Keep an eye out because Gary Thomas trying to get past Travis Henderson. Really good. For, might go lightly. He did indeed go lightly. He went super hard to get that lead, though. As Henderson makes the mistake. Here comes Gary Thomas trying to make the move in to the quarry. Ben, and he's going to do a little excuse me there. They get past Travis Henderson. We're on board with Gary, with, sorry, yeah, Gary Thomas just getting by. And now behind will be Link Kinchlow licking his lips. Anybody having a crash at the moment? No, let's keep it safe as they come through the cutting. Everything's cool and calm, but Ray Partridge is starting to harass the back of Link Kinchlow. Link Kinchlow, very slow up the hill. That car really doesn't have any legs going up. Like, I... I could just hear the car laboring. It's like, uh, you know. Yeah, VTech gonna kick in. I think Travis Henderson just hit the wall coming around Solman, and that's gonna be interesting. Yeah, he did. He's had a moment. In Whoa! He has had a few hits there, losing a little bit of time, losing a little bit of balance there. Get that car calmed down. Oh, don't upset the apple cart. Needs to catch up to the back of these leaders. The leader losing two positions halfway through the first lap. And essentially has to. Uh... Oh, he's at the wall again. Oh crikey, he really is having, <laughs> he really is having a, a bit of a trouble with the wall, isn't it? Yeah, tires. Remember, this is a cold track. Now that doesn't mean yes, cold track means more grip. All this fog means a bit more aero downforce and all that. But can they get the heat in these tires? You'd think they'd probably be able to, but just look at it. Yes, you are seeing cars there. It is tough to see them through the fog and the haze, but they continue on. Yeah, it wouldn't be surprised me if he's just struggling for grip. And again, another little off track. There. In fact, look how many cars going off. Just unable to keep it on the straight and narrow. But that's no fault of those. That is Jason Wallet facing the wrong way. A little bit of a mistake, I think. All on his own. Yes, it was. Let's see the replay. Jason Wallet coming in to the second to last section. Oh, yeah. Clip the curb. Whew, that is a... Uh, he did hold the brakes, most definitely, because uh, I, I guarantee you he was trying to get the car stopped, but it's a front-wheel drive car, and the brakes aren't that great. Let's be realistic. Kenneth Reader, what has happened to Kenneth Reader? He is down in 11. He was 12 at one stage as Michael Hogg was battling him, and unfortunately, Michael Hogg losing out. This battle, though, at the front of the field... Is looking pretty juicy as Travis Henderson tried to catch up to Gary Thomas. Ray Partridge got past Link Kinchlow after a mistake on the exit of the chase for Kinchlow. So now all of a sudden, this Hyundai of Henderson trying to get past the Hyundai, the 19. You know it's 19 because it's got the 19 on the roof of Travis, of Gary Thomas. I just said the wrong card. <laughs> might go lightly. He's gone. He's gone very lightly. Very lightly into the sunset, most definitely. Because Whoa. Hey! <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on fire today. Somebody, please, give me a, 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 a bottle of whiskey. Um, but, uh... <laughs> oh, no, what's happened to Michael Hogg? No, it's a cult. No, it's a oh, cult. Michael Hogg catching Kenneth Reader. A little tap with Ken and Reader and Michael Hogg getting collected. Whoa! You just saw what happened there. Look at, look at it from his uh, perspective on the gyro. Oh no, he caught him. Oh. Yeah, a tag. A little tag. Ken Reader ripped the toe. Meanwhile, while we're watching this, Travis Henderson finally get past Gary Thomas as well. We'll get back to that shortly. Uh, Henderson now up to P2. That uh, looked like a broken engine there is Gary Thomas. There's going to be no chance for a move here. He'll have to set himself up. Maybe a good exit here. Not yet. Not yet. But anything can happen. More positions going on. Tom Dryling getting past Daniel Howard as well in the background. All these drivers making up positions. Hacken should. Got to be said. Plus nine already after two laps. The sleeper ranger inside of him. Definitely putting in work. <laughs> I can't believe I even said that. Gary Thomas, oh, just 
I think he's getting rid of SS Do you ever get that feeling where you just start like, oh, I'm going to ca catch him, I'm going to catch him, and then you just self-sabotage and then you don't. And you overdrive? Yeah. Yeah, you overdrive. Exactly. Ray Partridge is right on the back of him now. And Ray Partridge has a really good run. In fact, look, Gary's having to take a defensive line. And there he goes. Audi, Audi power! Outside. The Audi power around the outside of Quarry. This is going to be one hell of a move if he makes it. Can't slow it down to get it by. Gary Thomas will hold on to the last podium spot. But the more they fight, there's Lynn. And there's a blue car we've not talked about all day. It's hack and shut. I would point out that for a car, especially of this configuration, I don't think outside degree will actually do anything for you. Because Outs outside of Corey, nothing. No, N no good. No, you, you're no. Bas all you're basically doing is just saying, okay, I'm here now. Uh, but, um, <laughs> that's about it. Because, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I say, we haven't talked about Hackers. What the last time we talked about Hackers shirt was having a few mistakes, so knock on wood, he doesn't get that today. But he's driving really well at the moment. So actually, it's Tom Dryling just had a mo Tom Dryling's had a moment at the top of the hill. Oh, god, accident on I think his own. Yes, indeed, it was coming through. In oh, no, 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 no. Oh. oh. No, oh. no, and then I won't say hold on to this, but Tom Dryling just did the big no-no. Reversed. All right. <laughs> oh! No! What are you doing, Tom? <sighs> oh. Yeah. Tom. Yeah. Yeah, that's um. Unfortunate. Big no, no, Tom. I, I, I know you're in a tough position there, but um, y y your instinct, your instinct is I've got to get off the track. Unfortunately, when you're sideways, the best thing to do is not worry about where you're on the track and just stop. And uh, yeah, especially in these cars, you can't spin the t you can't spin the rear tires to spin you around per se. So it's really tough there. So unfortunately. That has happened. Also, Link Hinchlow, I think he had to serve a slowdown somewhere. He did indeed. He is under severe pressure. That is shut in the back of your screens. Looking to threaten him on the inside. He'll have the track position. Hyundai Power versus Honda Power. I think the South Koreans have got it. Just can about. The Japanese, can the Japanese respond? He, he's v got v oh, v wow! VTech Power kicked in, yo! What a move from the Kinchlow! No, seriously, what a move! Michael Hogg comes into the pit. We've got five cars with meatball flags out there. Howard, Dryling, Redeker, Wallet, Hogg. All of them having meatball flags. Sorry. Sorry, stuck in my throat there. Link Kinchlow with a fantastic move. Did not expect that. I don't think Hacken expected that either. No, I thought I, I think Hacken thought that he had it secured and all wound up. Oh and he... no, 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 no! Oh yeah, 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 yeah! Hacken should almost try to make a move into Solman Park. He almost rear-ended and pit maneuvered Lynn. He had so much speed at the top of the hill. Kinchelo trying to run away now, but is under severe threat from Hacken should battle for the top five. Uh, you can just see how much of a tank slapper these cars give out when you're trying to uh, get through the S's. The back end just sort of says, I exist. Do I? Do I exist? <laughs> do, do I exist? Where am I? Where do I go? Where do I go? Right, well, now Audi, the Hyundai is going to start to pull, and then you got to wait for that VTEC engine, yo, to kick in. Right, can you imagine these Honda, race Hondas actually had a VTEC engine? That would be, that would be, that would, I'm pretty sure they did back in the day. They probably did. Look at the overspeed though from Hackett. He's going to try to go for it. Lynn tried to go for a defense. And that little move off the racing. No! Oh, what? Hack, what? Lynn Kinchelow no, got a pointed the, back the right way around. Watch that back. I'm sorry. How did you get that car keep pointing forward? Look at that. I'm uh, sorry. Now that is, that is what we call car control. What? <laughs> sorry, Ma sorry, Lynn. How many moments are you going to give me in this race? That's a brilliant move. Like, really? 
really good as we keep this battle going for the podium. I'm still in shock there. Ray Partridge, Gary Thomas battling on, and you can see Gary is automatically on the defensive line. He's going to try and do the hack and choke game pass. Walter Chick Hotto in the background. Can Ray do this round the outside? It's going to be tough. They touch and no. Yeah, it gets ejected onto the outer rim. For for Ray Partridge. And just... Back towards he can. He's going to pro... You mean the straight down the bottom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the straight is the convoy straight, and then um, the cutting is the corner after what you call pedigree. Oh, okay, so the, I'm on the, the wrong the, side the, of the track. The, right, so uh, yeah, the, the final, the, the corner before the long straight here is Forest Elbow. Okay, so the track there. The hey, track. hey, Rob. Hey, yeah. Rob. Yes. How's Radion? Yeah, yeah Radion's grey, isn't it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> You threw that pitch up for me and I hit it out the park. Yeah, that. Here's Forest Elbow. Down yeah. they come uh, with the Falcon. Remember, these cars are not driving Falcon tires because Falcon tires are not very good race tires. Just the man that drives a Honda, that means I have Hanuk tires. <laughs> <laughs> Hanuk tires! I thought, really good, got the car. Literally, that a few months, a month later. In the Formula E with Hannock all-purpose tyres in the New York Grand Prix. They're great race tyres with grooves that can do wet and dry. But if you start dry and then it rains, there's no tread anymore. And they turn into slicks in the rain. Yep, that sounds very right. Oh, dear. It was, it was quite funny. Ernie Ludwig getting past Wolchi Chikoto. Uh, Hotto. No, sorry, Hacken should sorry, getting past Ernie Ludwig. So Hacken is on his return. And he's only seven seconds behind Link Inchlow. Just saying. The same. Anything's possible in the realm of motorsport. We've seen it happen many times before, where a car just out of is able to secure the absolute. If I can get my. Uh, <laughs> absolutely on track to get probably sixth. Hack and Shut has already lost the back end of Ling. Six, five laps completed. Another five and a bit to go. The current standing order means that the biggest battle is the one that we just saw on our screens. And this one here, right? A nibble? Say nibble, but I don't. I nibble. Uh, well, well. Br breaking news: the humidity's gone down to ninety-nine percent. Um, that, that that concludes the weather forecast. Well, it, I was wondering why it was. <laughs> I was wondering why the fog was going away. Yeah, yeah. A whole one percent just stopped all the fog. Moving swiftly. Or oh, not swiftly if you're fogged because you don't move away that quickly. Partridge did not have a good downhill part of the mountain. He's lost a lot of time to Gary Thomas there. I say a lot of time. It's half a second. But that means, well, not really half a second. It's a few tenths. It means he's not really close up there. So he's going to have to just bide his time. It's lap six. So when they cross the line, it'll be lap seven. Remember, the top tower shows you the laps completed, not the lap they're on. Gary Thomas having a little bit of a wiggle there breaking for the chase notice where he started that you don't break in the middle of the track there uh gary just to warn you so a driver's good at the start of this track and a driver's bad at the middle of the track so if you put these two together you put their skills together you might have a car that could beat might go lightly say that they can't beat michael lightly but it's just not michael lightly is very good on this track other options are available of course Hey, my, my, yeah, you can go uh, have it. Oh, Link Kinchlow's in the pits. Link Kinchlow's in the pits. Is that a meatball flag? Is the meatball flag? And I did see Lim was having issues he going has up the hill. He has suspension damage, I think. Yeah, no, he, I did see him have issues going up the hill. 
Now, I don't know where he got that. He had a bad entry into the cutting, but he didn't hit the wall. And I but he does he have a fast repair. Yeah, but I reckon he hit that down the S's. Um... I... No, it was the inside of Forest. He did, yeah, he did what everybody doesn't want to do we talk about everybody always talks about hitting the outside on the exit of the forest elbow but everyone always forgets that sometimes you just come from a bit too a bit too less speed than you're used to and um you hit the inside and during the baffos 12 hour in the gt3 saw that quite a bit and i had to avoid turning in early a couple times because i almost made the same mistake it can happen and kinshlo's just done a drift into the wall at the cutting his day is not going good after some really good move. I, I mean, other, other words could be used, but yeah. Actually, I think you can actually use that word on, on the BBC. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. Did it, did it. Sherlock, it's just like Ten te Technically, I've heard shit on Radio Four in the, in midday. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of because it's like it's like the it's like the what's it the the ready salted or the ready salted or what is it the, the ready salted swear word? <laughs> Hold on, were you gonna say the ready salted swear word? Oh, Gary Thomas, Fred Partridge having a really good battle for the podium here while Rob is trying to compare swear words with with crisps. With flavored Chris and also Yeah, I was gonna actually say it was the ready salt and flavor swear word. I don't like this from Gary. He's not helping himself here. Because he is try he basically what Ray's plan is right now is let Gary make the mistake as they are on the start of lap eight here. Make him make the mistake and look what's happened. The mistake has been made. Partridge gonna go to the outside he's gonna go aha to gary thomas tries around the outside got the speed gary's gonna have to outbreak him but there's half a car between the two of them and knowing me knowing you ray partridge goes through ray partridge up into third securing the spot now at least for half a lap as he'll be able to tuck in gary thomas right under his thumb while going up there oh crikey <laughs> gary thomas Probably, <laughs> probably screaming in his car at that point. That the car wanted to whip around on him, and that would have been the end of his race. But able to skillfully tame the car down and say, "No, no, 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 no. We're not having another one of these situations happening." A good save, actually. That's a yeah, that was really a really good save, yeah. Especially for a front-wheel drive car like that one. Especially with just the way that the way that the the, the cut that the, the track is there, entering the cutting, there is a little bit of a camber. So losing it out there, oh man, he's taking a lot of speed coming down the skyline though. That's interesting to see. Down one more time. Look at the lines he's taking. Open up the dipper there. So that's really interesting. He gets onto the back of Ray. Almost slides in before Forest Elbow. Who gets the better exit here? It's not going to be Gary. He's hit the wall. And I'll tell you how I knew that right away, Rob. He took way too much speed. He was way too central in the track there. Yes, you don't want to be far out and track out to, to and open the corner out there at Forest Elbow, but you want to be somewhat middle. He was a bit too middle, if that makes sense. No, that's understandable. Good. Too <laughs> middle. Yeah. Uh, he was too middle, yeah. Too mid, too mid. Oh, too mid. Anyway, he does have a chance. Sorry, he does have a chance to get back on the horse. And on the horse, he will try. I'm also keeping my eyes on Travis Henderson as well, Rob, because he has taken a second out of Mike Go Lightly last lap, a second out of Mike Go Lightly the lap before. They are on lap nine. That means there is lap nine, lap 10, lap 11. That's three. The gap is 3.7 seconds. Don't say maybe, but Travis Henderson might be catching up to Mike Go Lightly. I know, it's not a case of might. He is catching up to him, but will he catch up to him in time? To make a difference. That RGS says, yeah. RGS says, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe. That's a good answer. But there, is, there isn't any other battle out there on the track at the moment. Wolf Street Hotel is trying to catch up to Ernie Lovewig, not getting it. So we are keeping our eyes on this battle for the last podium spot as Ray Partridge tries to hold off Gary Thomas. And 
Is that sunshine I just saw? You did just see a little, uh, a little inkling of sunshine, yes. Wow. Why? Right, the sun. The sun's come out. The what sun. Do we do? Uh, the, what do you mean? What are we doing? We're just in, in greet the sun like you would. It's the sun. Ah, uh, good day, sun. There you go. <laughs> good day, son. Good day, son. son. <laughs> no, you're not. You're not my son, but you're the. Son. <laughs> you're the son, and not the other son that I don't like. Boo. Boo. Uh, <laughs> moving on. Look at the speed, Gary Thomas. Look, look, he he's almost losing the car, having to slow it down more than he expects. He carries so much speed into Skyline down the S's. And Ray is a little bit more passive and safer down there. And now let's see, does he take this a bit too much? Look, he is so close to that barrier. I think Gary has to do two adjustments on the steering wheel there. That, that's what it feels like to me. I'm going to have a quick look myself. But it feels like going through Forest, he has to do two adjustments. Yeah. Yeah, he turns in, realizes he's gone too far in. So then he just waits again before he gets back on the steering Gary is... I want to say he's overdriving the car. I honestly do. I would say he's overdriving probably, the car. It probably wouldn't surprise me that he is doing that, simply because he's just trying to close the gap enough to get an effective move done come the time that he's able to do it. So he'd be Roll right... another second. Uh, yeah, the, it, is, it is coming. It is coming. Henderson is coming. Look busy. I mean, I tell you, I'd look, I'd, I'd be Michael Lightly in his ear saying, yeah, you need to be very busy, you know, not allowing that gap to extend any further. No, or I, if, if I, yeah, if I might go lightly, if, I, if I'm telling Mike, Mike go lightly what to do, I'm telling him just drive. I'm not telling him to overdrive. I'm not telling him the gaps. I'm telling him to just drive. Because if you keep thinking about that gap closing, you're gonna have a bad time and you're gonna make those mistakes. So yeah. realistically, his best thing right now is to just drive. I know it's it's hard, but there's no point trying to complicate things right now. No, especially when especially when he is in in the in the in the in the point. No, he's got. Well, let's see. He's just at the top of the hill right now on lap ten, the penultimate lap. That gap's three seconds. I reckon. That uh, Travis is making this time up down the hill. And in fact, as I say that, that that timing tower, the number starts to go lower. And since I started talking, half a second lost. So it does look that way. But also then, Travis making a mistake as well. Now, I think that could be it. And that's going to be a slowdown for Gary Thomas. No, it isn't. Okay. That was all four wheels off the track. Just saying. The computer says no. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. So, interesting enough, last lap, half the field set their fastest laps that last time by Thomas at 22.7, Partridge at 22.3, Schutt at 21.6, Ludwig at 23.5, 23.4 for Wolf T.T. Hotto, and a 23.3 for Lynn Kinch Low. They continue on by there. They are having their own little battle. All battles are equal, but some are more equal than others. As uh, Wolf does not, Wolf did, did not get a good run out of the forest elbow. And you do see the sunshine; it's coming back to visit us. The track temperature is growing to 28 degrees Celsius. The wind is still pretty massive at around 30 kilometers southeast. And as of right now, Wolf Dietrichato trying his level best to make a move into sixth. Consolation, of course, but every position counts in the grand scale of things. And for Ernie Ludwig, he is under severe amounts of pressure to keep his position as of right now, as Wolf has just caught right up to a white flag for them. Just across the line, the last lap for the MT MTCR is here at Bathurst. And of course, wide, unfortunately, Wolf Dietrich having to slow up a little bit more than he thought he should be able to. And has to do the chase all over again. Gary Thomas chasing down Ray Partridge is 1.3 seconds behind. And Michael Lightly has actually woken up. He woke up and said, 
I'm actually going to go faster than Travis Henderson in that last lap, and he did by three one hundredths of a second. Two two one six six three compared to two two one six nine eight on the laps, respectively. And I think, unfortunately, the Veloster, uh, the Veloster. Oh, how do you, how the hell do you even say that? Veloster. Yeah, why? Awesome. Why did? Why do Hyundai? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And it's also Hyundai. Hyundai. I'll, I'll, no. I'm, I'm okay. going to call okay. it Hyundai. What, 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 whatever. Anyway, Henderson did not have a good downhill section, and I think he's conceded that the chase is over. And Go Lightly has just got three important corners left. Audi power. <laughs> Let's see where the Hondas are. Oh, yeah. Randy comes to the chase. Really good drive. Remember, he got the lead on the first lap and never lost it again. Murray's corner will greet him one final time. And Travis and Mike Golightly is going to take the second split for the MTCR here at Mount Panorama. Travis Henderson's going to come around the corner. There you see his roof. He's going to get that P2, and in eight seconds' time, we're going to see Ray Partridge. Can he hold off Gary Thomas? I can confirm to you if they come through the final corner, he is. Very well done. To the top three, especially to go lightly. The only Audi winner, at least I think it is. The only Audi? Oh, well, I can't even remember. I, I, I'm not sure if, the others were, if any other winners were Audi, but for us, it was our only Audi winner. And... In a lovely little livery that I I do like the uh, the white and orange the white and orange um just looks 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 perfect. Ernie Ludwig holds off Wolf Dietrich Hotho to the line, and as we come back, and poor Lynn Kinchlo just issue after issue befell him, and I feel like he just yeah just I'd say I'd say he's been pretty gutted with how it turned out. No, uh, Michael Hogg still running. He's up into ninth. He made up. I think he's made up a few positions. I think. Uh, Michael Hogg has made up four positions. I just, it, you know, it, it's just not a cult. It, you know, I don't know what to tell you, but he's out making up four positions. You know, you know, don't not worry about it. It's not a cult. Not a cult. Um, what else we have? Tom Dryling. And Mark Redeker, Jason Wallet will be the last one to be lapping around in the Udox cars. And I do like the color scheme, actually. And I, do, I, I, I always I, love that color scheme. Yeah. Always. The two retirees, by the way, Kenneth Reader um, and uh, Daniel Salim Howard, both having issues and just unable to do it. By the way, Matt Gelder. I think was having issues. Um, he was telling us in the the chat. Yeah, PC. Cr uh, it's a, not PC. Sim crashed. The sim. The sim decided yeah. that it, it no longer liked being a sim. It wanted to be a real human, not an imaginary human in a game created by EA. So what you're saying is it's I am robot. Uh, I didn't say that. You. Said I said that. that. I said that. Yes. Yeah. But does take us to the end of race three and i think let me just double check the end of festivities for today we are hoping that we um let me see do we have do, 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 do. we do uh, we, we do not have any interviewees and if you wish to do interviews i would say head on over to gsrc i'm more than happy to take you and, but I will say, good racing out there today. Um, I I I always love the TCRs when they come around. They do they do a lot of um, elbows out stuff, and that's and that's my yeah. personal favorite kind of racing. But by, by the way, um, mm. remember Ryan Walker? Yeah, yeah, he finished seventh in the top split. Hey! So what a drive! What a you drive! Know, what a what a recovery drive that was. Um, next time out though, Rob. I. <clears throat> we can't say the official terminology. You know what the official terminology is. But I am going to say May the 19th, the Speedway 500. We, 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 can, we can say. We can, 
say the, the Delaras. Car. We can say the Delara, the Delara IR 18s. No, we can actually say the proper name. It's an Indy car, Rob. I thought can't... the IR 18 was his proper name. We can call it what it really is, Rob. We okay. can legally call it an Indy car. We just can't call the race that thing. Oh, it's the, the Speedway. The... 500 at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It's one of the crown jewels of the season. The full 500 miles on. <laughs> it is 500 miles, yes, at the Speedway 500 at a track that is similar to some track in Indianapolis. You, you know, we both know. So you can actually say that. You, you just can't say it. You just can't com copy the name of the event. That's the only copyright. I can't call it the official event name, no. But. Yeah. And Indianapolis, we hope the speed the Speedway 500 you there. But until then, until May the 18th, I have been Robert O'Brien, and I have been Craig King, and this has been Rally on TV, the only corner that you need. Good evening, one and all. <laughs>